Thank you for tuning in to Propel Church. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to our podcast, we're so glad that you chose to join us today. We believe that God has great things in store for you and hope that you are encouraged and inspired by this message. So excited this morning. Uh, we are wrapping up our Pillars series. This has been a six week message series for us. And we've talked about some things in this series that have been pretty crucial for our lives as followers of Jesus. And so in week one, we talked about having a foundation of prayer. And we kicked off 21 days of prayer. Week two, we talked about baptism. Week three, we talked about consistency and what it looks like for you and I to keep doing things over and over and over again, even when it doesn't make sense. The week after that, we talked about eternal impact and how we are called as followers of Jesus to leverage our life to make a difference in this world. And then last week, we talked all about a relationship with God and what it actually looked like. And I'm biased because I taught last week, but I'm just going to tell you last weekend's message was a really good one. And so you need to go and check that out if you missed it. Uh, It was all on relationship. And that relationship with God, according to Scripture, is like a marriage. And there's a few things in there that we need to really understand. This week, as we wrap up this series, one of the most foundational things that's important for you and I as followers of Jesus, is this word called community. Yeah. Turn to somebody and say community. community. Come on, 1030, y'all did so well with that. Sometimes you're still not awake yet, right? You need one more cup of coffee, but today you were ready. So community, community matters. It's so important for us as believers, as followers of Jesus. And the first time we find this idea is actually in Scripture. When we go into Genesis chapter 1, in the very beginning of our Bible, in Genesis 1, we see that God is on the mission of creating. And so he's going through all of the days. When we get to day 6, God says that he's going to make mankind in our image, because we serve one God who exists in three parts, Father, Son, and Spirit. He himself is in community. But not only that, then he creates Adam. And when Adam is ruling and kind of operating in the world, he's given Adam the responsibility to name the animals and to rule and reign over the earth. But it doesn't take him long to figure out that that you just can't leave a man by himself for too long. Come on, any ladies are like, you like, that's right. So this is what God says in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. And sometimes when we read that word, helper, we, we look at, at women as if they are uh, less than, but that's not what the word there means at all. The, the, Greek, or the Hebrew word that's used there is to communicate that they are the same but different. Like They are the same in the fact that God has given them the opportunity to rule over the world, to be entrusted with dominion over it, and yet at the same time they are different because they are different genders. God created both male and female. And so when we get into Genesis chapter 2, it shows us something foundational that's important for us with this idea of community when God says it's not good for the man to be alone. And he's gone through all of creation, going from from day one now to day six, and he's been saying, it is good, it is good, it is good, it is good. And now, all of a sudden, one thing is not good, and it's not good for man to be alone because God made us to do life with others. He made us to do life with others. You were not created or designed by God to do life alone. Instead, he created you to do life with other people, to be in relationship with other people, to be connected with other people. He made you to do life with others. For some of us, we fall into this trap of thinking that we need people because of sin and because of the fall in the broken world, but we haven't got to Genesis 3 yet. When we look at God's perfect plan for your life and mine, it was to do life with others. That's his plan. That's his design. Why? Because he's the creator. And the creator knows exactly what his creation needs and what his creation needed were other people. They needed others. 
They needed to be in relationship and to be connected with other people. God made us to do life with others because people need people. You can't do life alone. Now, some of you want to do life alone. Right. Anybody been there where you're like, Lord, just give me a couple of days away from people. <laughs> That's a campsite, not a resting place. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't live there. You can't live isolated because it's part of God's design for you. Part of God's design for your life is to be in relationship and in connection with other people. And so one of the things we say here at Propel Church is that we have a culture statement that says we commit to community. Because there's a lot of times where I don't feel like doing something, but if I'm committed to it, I choose to do it anyways. Yeah. And sometimes doing life with other people is like that. Come on, anybody else you feel that way? You're like, I don't really want to all the time, but I know I need to. We commit to it. We prioritize it. And, and for a long time, when it came to this culture statement, I almost wanted to change it to we commit to biblical community because if we're not careful, we will substitute God's design for biblical community with any other community that will accept us and take us in. And so we, we don't leverage or think about what's really beneficial for us or intentional to grow our life. But, but hear me. If the only reason why you get plugged into a group and you, you build biblical community today is because when we look at Genesis chapter 2, we find that it's God's design for us. That reason is absolutely enough. Yeah. Yeah. He's our creator who knows exactly what we need. And when he says you weren't, it's not good for man to be alone, it's not good for women to be alone, it's not good for anybody to be alone, we need to take that into consideration when we look at how we live our life. But if that's not enough for you, which I think it should be, but if it's not, I do have a second point. <laughs> Here's the second thing for you this morning. Is that community is crucial for your development. Community is crucial for your development. It's really crazy that, um, like, like parents, when you are talking to your teenagers, you preach and teach the value of having the right friends from a young age, right? It's so important. Your friend group matters because, because really, if, if we boil it down, the direction of your life is dictated by the circle of friends you keep. Yeah. Yeah, right. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future, right? Your friend group matters so much. And so we talk about this to our, to our kids and our teenagers, like you need to make sure you hang out with the right friends who are making the right choices, who are moving in the right direction. Be intentional with your circle. But then when we enter into adulthood, we just stop being selective with who we let in. Right. We just let anybody and everybody into our circle. And if you're not careful, your growth is going to be stunted and hindered and limited to the people you surround yourself with. Because whether you like it or not, you are a byproduct of the environments you're in and the people you surround yourself with. Yeah. Right. So if you don't feel like you're growing, it's probably because you're not in the right circle. Right. If you don't feel like you're, you're moving in the right direction or you, you, you feel like you're, you're struggling with the same issue. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day who was, who was talking about uh, dealing with anxiety and, and depression. And those are very real things. We're not going to over, I don't want to over spiritualize it and tell you if you just pray, it goes away. Cause there's times where you can pray and you can fast and you can believe, and you still have these struggles. Paul talked about having a thorn in his flesh. But when I started asking them about their friend group, what we identified is out of the four close friends they have, all of them struggle with the exact same thing. Well, in order for you to get out, you're going to have to get out. You know what I'm saying? Like, in order for you to get out of the, the environment you're in, in order for you to grow out of that space, you're going to have to get into a spot where you are being developed and you're growing in your relationship with God. Yeah. This is not just a personal opinion. This is scriptural. If we look, we, we see in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Proverbs is, is the book of wisdom. It's given to you and I as a tool and a resource for you and I to look at the Word of God and allow it to shape and mold and transform our life. And so Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Right. 
Iron sharpens iron is this idea, if you, if you look at a, a blacksmith who had a tool that needed to be sharpened, what they would do is they would take two pieces of iron, two pieces of materials. And, and when you take iron like that, iron at that time especially had high levels of impurities within it. And so they would take one surface that was going to be sharper than everything else. It was going to be harder. It was going to be the material that would be the sharpening stone. And they would take the iron or the blade that needed to be sharpened and they would grind the two together. And in order for the knife or, 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 or any material to become sharp, it had to be in contact with something that was harder than itself. Iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Tori and I saw this. We uh, went, and one day for a date night, we did a blacksmith class, which, a little alarming, she looked really happy making knives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, you know, pray for me. Don't play with me. You know, so, <laughs> boy, she, we, we went to this blacksmith class, and we got to see just how hard it would be to make a knife, to make something that was dull, all of a sudden become sharp. And there was a lot of friction and there was a lot of sparks. And so when we think about the community that we're in, I think for some of us, we haven't really considered the people we're surrounded with when it comes to our spiritual growth. Your friend group matters. The people you let in matter because if they are not harder, stronger, further along than you, then there's no way you're going to be able to be sharpened by them. And so even for me as the the pastor of this church, like you are part of my community, but I uh, need some people in my life who are stronger and further ahead and lead churches that are larger than ours and things like that. So I, I travel sometimes halfway around the world if it means I get in the right room with the right people just to sit and listen and to be discipled and invested into iron sharpens iron. A couple thoughts for you real quick. For some of us, the reason why we're not growing is because we're only being sharpened by dull people. Don't elbow your neighbor, right? (laughs) But if they're not further along than you, if they're not growing in their relationship with the Lord, then, then you need to take the next step to find people who are further along than you. It makes such a big difference. The second thing is, for some of us, the reason why we're not growing is because when iron sharpens iron, sparks start flying and friction happens. So you dip out every single time there's relational tension. If you really want to grow, you have to learn to embrace that uncomfortability a little bit. You're going to have to learn how to not leave every relationship just because somebody disagreed with you. You're going to have to learn how to stick it out when things get difficult. Because the third reason why some of us aren't growing is we don't actually like people telling us we do wrong. We just have a friend group of people who, who are just like, you are awesome and amazing. You need people who are not impressed by you to be in your circle. You need people who who are close enough to you that can look at your faults and your flaws and your failures and hold you accountable, who can call you to a higher standard, who can look and say, that might be how you feel, but that's not God's best for your life. Who can challenge you to do all that God's called you to do. You need those kind of people. And so we believe that's what biblical community provides. It provides people who are moving in the same direction. And for some of us, the reason why we aren't being sharpened in this season is because we've been in the game for long enough that we think we're good. But until you go be with the Lord, there are impurities in your metal that need to be worked out. This is the process of sanctification. This is the process where we become more and more like Jesus. And until you become perfect, you still got stuff to work on. And the way you work on those is in biblical community. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. This is something that every single one of us need. Every single person in this room needs the kind of community that spurs them on and pushes them to develop in their relationship with Jesus. And here's the third thing. Community gives support in times of need. Community gives support 
in times of need. Now, for some of you, this is one of the hardest ones because you were a part of a church or something at one time, and when you needed people the most, they let you down. Anybody ever been let down by people? Yeah, it happens. And some of you have been part of churches where you were a part of this community and, and everything was going great and, and, and you loved it. It was awesome. But then all of a sudden, when you needed them most, they just disappeared. The goal of biblical community is that there is an environment where they give you support in those times of need. I don't know what you need, but I do know the worst time to figure out you don't have biblical community is when you need it. Yeah. Right? The way we structure and live our lives should be that we are involved in biblical, biblical community to the point where when something happens in our life, we're able to take the next step, call on our community, and they can come alongside of us and hold us up in that season. That's why Paul writes it like this in Galatians chapter 2. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. Paul said the way biblical community works is that you're going to have to let people in close enough that they know what's going on in your life. I know you've got friends and, 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 and I know you've got relationships with other people, but let me ask you, who really knows what's going on in your life? I'm not talking about what you post on social media. I'm not talking about Facebook, Instagram, X, whatever that is, threads. I ain't talking about any of that. What's going on in your, who knows the real stuff? Like if you, if you take off the facade, who knows what's really going on in your life? Who knows what's going on behind the scenes? Who knows the struggles you're going through in your marriage, in your workplace? Who knows that you're having difficulties waking up in the morning and getting out of bed because you don't feel like you got purpose anymore? Who knows what's really going on in your life? Because until you get in biblical community, until you have the relationships where you can call on and do life with other people, even when you're not doing well, you are missing out on God's plan for your life. This is the point of biblical community. The point of biblical community is to be in God's plan and God's design, is to have people who are sharpening you. But when you go through difficulties, the local church, the body of Christ, are supposed to be people who hold you up, who encourage you, who inspire you, who call you to greater things when you feel like throwing in the towel and giving up. And if you've never felt that way, this is not going to be encouraging. You will at some point. You will. At some point, you're going to feel like quitting. At some point, you're going to feel like giving up. But God made you to do life with people. So when you get to that spot, you have relationships that you can lean on and have people come alongside you. And I get it. There have been people who hurt you in the past. But how long are you going to let the poor decisions of somebody else keep you from God's plan for your life? Somebody's mistake doesn't change God's plan. God's plan for your life is to be in biblical community, to be connected, to grow in relationship with others. I love it too. Uh, we see this in uh, even in the world that we live in. Anybody like Shark Week? Shark, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shark, Shark Week is like one of the reasons why I don't get in the ocean. You know, like. <laughs> The other one is that I stepped on a fish one time and like I couldn't see him and he wiggled under my feet and I freaked out and it's just never been the same for me. I don't like the ocean a whole lot. Um, but Shark Week. And, uh, and so if you watch Shark Week, one of the things that you'll see is uh, they, they kind of go through the hunting patterns of sharks. And in the, the patterns, uh, you've got a whole uh, a flock of seals, a pack of seals. I don't know. It's one of those. <laughs> Somebody, you can Google it and send it to uh, T. Newman at Propel.Church. So, <laughs> the flock of seals, pack. I'm going to go with pack. Let's stick yeah. there. So, you got a whole group of seals. <laughs> and, uh, and they are, they're moving in the same direction. They're, they're moving together. And what you'll notice is the sharks don't attack the group of seals while they're together. As long as they're moving in the same direction and they're, and they're, 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 in, in a group, they're fine. But the moment one gets isolated, that's when it becomes lunchtime. 
Like the moment one drifts from the pack, that's when the shark comes and he devours and he destroys the seal. Yeah. And this is exactly what Jesus talks about in Luke 15. This is why he's so passionate about leaving the 99 and going after the one. He's so passionate about it and he's completely willing to do it because he knows that the 99, they're in community. There's safety in numbers. They've got some stuff going on together, but there's somebody that's been isolated. And if the enemy can isolate you, he will destroy you. So his goal is to bring you back into the flock, to be in community, to do life with other people. Because while you may want to be isolated, while you may want a day off from people, God made you and designed you to be in relationship with others. He made you and designed you to do life with other people. It's not just a suggestion. It is God's plan for your life. And so here at Propel Church, we use groups as a tool to help you embrace biblical community. Groups are a tool to help you embrace biblical community. I'll tell you, it's not a perfect system, but, but anytime you deal with people, it's not perfect. Right. If anybody could have built a perfect team, it would have been Jesus. Right. When Jesus was picking his friend group, he picked guys like Doubting Thomas. You ever want to have a friend who just doubted you all the time? <laughs> you ever want to have a friend who would deny you or who would betray you? No, we don't want those kind of things. But, but what we know is that Jesus is all-knowing. And so he picked Peter, knowing that Peter would deny him. He picks Judas, knowing that Judas would betray him. Jesus didn't have a perfect friend group around him. And yet, he still chose to embrace biblical community. So we use groups as a tool here to help you embrace biblical community. And the way we do that is through semesters. Now, I know some churches that do groups and there's like never an end date with them for small groups and uh, the only person I love that much is my wife right anybody else I'm not signing up to be uh, committed to you for that long and so uh, but when we look at groups we do these in semesters so the way a semester works is it's 12 weeks at a time so we do a fall semester and a spring semester of groups and then we have one in the summer that's six weeks and so uh For some of you, like signing up for a group can be a little bit overwhelming, but here's really what I'm asking you to do. As we look at groups, I'm asking you to give me an hour and a half, 12 times. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. If you can give me an hour and a half, 12 times, I believe you will grow in your relationship with God like never before. And here's the best news. If you get in a group full of weird people, it's done in 12 weeks. You got an easy on-ramp, easy off-ramp. If you get in a group and you're like, this is really not for me, do you know how many things you do that you don't really enjoy 12 times? Laundry? (laughs) Dishes? Some of y'all sit in that parent driveline every day. You can do 12 times for an hour and a half. It'll make a huge difference. So here's, I'm going to give you the groups on the screen. If you're uh, a hub captain or a group leader that's going to be at tables, you can go ahead and exit at this time. And so just to kind of give you a rundown of groups, a couple of things to note. We, we let you know about all of our groups this weekend, um, but they don't start like this week. We give you a, one week to adjust your schedule to work uh, anything out because we know some of y'all got like 56 kids and uh, you're going to have to figure out what to do with all of them. And so as you look at the groups, uh, the only thing I'm asking you to do is pick one, like pick one. Some of y'all are going to be a little over ambitious and you want to jump in to 14 of them. You can't, there's 11, but um, you can just find a group this semester. And so a couple of uh, things I'm going to run down with you really quick. You'll notice there's a color that's, uh, that corresponds with these groups. Uh, those are the hub keys that we have. And so all of the freedom groups are in that teal color. Hangout groups are in the red color. And so as you exit today, you're going to notice there are tablecloths that are these colors out in the lobby. If you've got questions about any of these groups, you're going to be able to exit 
talk to those group leaders and figure out all the information that you need from them. It's a great way to just get connected and, and also get your questions answered. So we've got Women's Freedom Group, which if you've never been a part of Freedom before, uh, it's a group that helps you settle your yesterdays so that you can step into what God has for your life. It is an amazing group, and I highly recommend it. For there. Uh, hangout groups, we got Lights and Lens. It's a photography group that meets on Mondays. And all of our groups, whether they're hangout groups, men's, women, or studies, there is a biblical portion to it. We call it ESPN, Encouragement, Scripture, Prayer, and Next Steps. Every one of our groups has those four elements. So photography group on Mondays with Darren. Uh, we got yarn junkies with my wife, Tori. I got so much yarn in my house, somebody come crochet. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't going to be me. Yarn junkie hangout group. Five marks of a man with Tim Smith. What an amazing opportunity to figure out how God designed you for biblical manhood. Blanket Our Community is an outreach group that's focused on serving the community around here. Propel Students is really important to me. It's really important for our church because this is uh, how we do student ministry here at Propel. So if you have students that are in 6th through 12th grade, you need to connect them with Propel Students Wednesday, 6.30 to 8. Uh, it's going to be awesome. But parents, I'll tell you, it's really important for you to partner with us so that your kids can grow in their relationship with Jesus. Then we get into some study groups. We've got Good and Beautiful You with Tim Berge. Uh, we've got Financial Freedom with... That's me. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be leading a freedom group along with our executive director, Allie, uh, on financial freedom. And we took some uh, prayer requests that you had in the last 21 days of prayer. Realized that the number one struggle people had was with finances. And so we wrote a curriculum to kind of help you deal with the financial situations that you have, but also gain God's perspective on it. Navigating the Wilderness with Jeremy Myrtle. Then we've got women's groups. We've got Chicks and Chats with Savannah Ziskin and Praying Women with Tori. Regardless of what group you pick, I would say that a group is crucial for your growth. So again, they don't start this week. You have the opportunity to sign up this morning. A couple ways you can do it. You can scan that QR code. It takes you to a digital form. You can sign up right there on your phone. If you've got questions, they're available to answer them for you in the lobby. But let's recap this morning really quick. God made us to do life with others. Community is crucial for your development. And community gives support in times of need. He made you to do life with other people. So today my challenge for you is to find a group Sign up for one because your spiritual growth is right around the corner. If you're new to Propel Church, you're like, this is a weird weekend. I know you should come back next week. Right. And, uh, but groups are so important to us. That's why we structure the morning this way. Let me pray for us, and then you're going to be free to go. And again, parents, remember, don't just rush and get your kids. We've got them covered. Hey, God, we love you so much, and we thank you for the opportunity to unpack the truth of your word that you made us to do life with other people. You made us for biblical community. And so today we pray that you would reveal to us what the right group is in this next season. Help us grow with others as you've called us to do. We love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for checking out today's message at Propel Church. We pray that God spoke to you powerfully. And if you made any kind of decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or recommit your life to Jesus, or maybe you just want to share something that God spoke to you through today's message, do us a favor and send us an email to amen at propel.church. And if God is using this ministry to impact your life and you'd like to partner with us financially, you can do so over at propel.church slash give. We pray God's blessing and favor over your life and believe that the best days have yet to come.